I want to talk about another important truth about our place in Christ, and it is about our freedom in Christ, that we are free in Christ. There is a place of freedom in Christ. When you become a believer in Jesus Christ, you are free from the bondage to the law. That you don't have to keep the law. When I say the law, I mean the Mosaic law, the Ten Commandments and all the other ceremonial laws that accompanied that, the community laws and the ceremonial laws, all of that we are free from. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, he says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage, with the yoke of bondage. So he's referring to the law as a yoke of bondage. So you and I must understand as believers, we are free from the yoke of the law, the Old Testament law, the yoke of bondage. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. Now, circumcision really is, 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 the, is to epitomize the keeping of the law. So he says, look, it doesn't mean anything, but faith which works through love. What really matters in Christ is faith working through lo love. So... The first thing you and I must understand is that we are free from keeping the law. We are not sub subject to the law. We live by something different. What do we as New Testament believers live by? We live by the Spirit, are being led by the Spirit, and we choose, we are, we are here to walk in love. So we walk in the Spirit and we walk in love. And let's just give some scripture to that. Galatians 5.18, Paul writes in that same epistle, he says, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law, period. If you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. If somebody asks you, why are you not following the law? Because the Bible says in Galatians 5.18, if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. I am, I have liberty in Christ. And my liberty says, if I am led by the Holy Spirit, I am not under the law. Also, you and I, we walk in love. And Paul writes in Romans 13, verse 8 and 10, he says, He who loves another has fulfilled the law. And verse 10, he says, Love is a fulfillment of the law. Now, if you walk in love, you're going to keep all of the law. So if you and I are led by the Holy Spirit and we are walking in love, we do much more than the, what the law requires. Secondly, in relation to the same thing, we are free from worthless rituals. You are free. You're now a son, a daughter of God in Christ. And why are you making yourself a slave to these weak and worthless rituals? He calls them weak and beggarly elements. Why are you making yourself a slave to it when you are free as a son and a daughter of God? We are free from man-made ideas. So sometimes these ideas are inside the church context. People say, you know, don't eat this, don't eat that. Observe this day, observe that day, observe this festival, observe that festival. And he says, look, we are free from these man-made things. So what are we supposed to do with this truth? Uh, how do we live this out practically? And this is somewhere I want, us to, I want you to pay close attention because sometimes, especially in our world today, where there's so much of thinking going on, there is a misunderstanding of what freedom is. I want to help us understand certain things about freedom given to us in the Bible. First of all, we are to stand firm in our freedom. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, Paul says, Stand firm in the liberty by which Christ has made you free. But in the same episode, Paul tells us, Don't misuse your freedom. Don't misuse your freedom. Look at this in Galatians 5, verse 13 and 14. He says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Let me say this. Walking in love towards others overrides walking in your freedom. Is what Paul is saying. Walking in love towards others is more important than walking in your freedom. So we have freedom, yes. But he said there's something more important. What is it? It's to walk in love. Another important aspect of walking in freedom is this, that walking in honor towards others 
overrides your walking in freedom. That means the exercise of your freedom ends and honor for somebody else begins. And lastly, keep, in, keep this in mind, your freedom ends where the well-being of another person begins, the well-being. If your freedom is gonna hurt somebody else, you're abusing, you're misusing your freedom. And so I want us as believers to understand we have complete freedom in Jesus Christ. Nothing can take, a, take that away. That in the expression of your liberty, do it in love, do it with honor to the other person, and do it with their well-being as foremost in your mind. Then we'll walk in the liberty that we have in Christ Jesus.